Good evening and welcome to yet another episode of KSAT's Know My Neighborhood. Tonight we bring you to a new part of San Antonio, one we haven't visited yet, hmm. the northeast side. This is a live look at the Northern Hills Golf Course. It sits right in the middle of one of the neighborhoods we are covering tonight in this episode of Know My Neighborhood. Northern Hills and Valencia, separated by Nacogdoches Road. These neighborhoods are tucked between Thousand Oaks and O'Connor. They go as far as Stall Road to just before Weedner Road. I'm Myra Arthur here with Steve Spreester, and no, we did not just play 18 holes, but we are inside <laughs> the 19th hole here at Northern Hills. I was tempted to go out there, but then I remembered uh, my golf swing. <laughs> but anyway, we're happy that you're joining us for this edition of Know My Neighborhood. We're at the 19th hole at the Northern Hills Golf Club. And when you think of Northern Hills, this neighborhood is almost synonymous with this golf course. But you may remember across the street on Nacogdoches, Valencia and the pool they used to have. Well, that pool is now closed and that's one of the concerns of this area, people getting involved, neighborly involvement. So to get an introduction to these two neighborhoods, Steve had a chat along the beautiful golf course here. I got to go to lunch with some of the neighborhood ladies to talk about the great things that are here and that hope to get more people involved. I'm sure all these golfers are like, what are these guys doing just sitting out really? here? When people say something about Northern Hill, one of the first things I say, you know, by the golf course. Everybody is thrilled that we have this in our neighborhood. And the value of the homes here have increased tremendously. And it's a, it's a good investment. And if you want a place to raise a family that's safe and nice, this is a great neighborhood to be in. We have access to all of the things we need to do in the area. The water main has broken in front of my house four times and uh, it's a joke around here. I'm the water lady. You had a water main break in front of your house four times? How? What, uh, what happened? They're coming apart. I want our city to be spending the money on the right things. And one of those right things is to make sure that infrastructure is taken care of. And I think that would really help everybody out, not just this neighborhood. That looks good. Why get together and lunch like this? Because we want to know each other. We moved in and our neighbors, the minute we, we managed to get our front door unlocked, our neighbors came over and said hello. Getting more younger people in your neighborhood, that seems to be something that both Northern Hills and Valencia would like to see happen. Oh, it vitalizes everything. Makes it fresh. Makes it fresh and uh, it really brings things to life that kind of as people age, they stop participating in. And you all are so involved in what the neighborhood's doing, you need people to kind of carry that on. People think nothing of buying tickets to a sports event, but will pay a very low amount to have dues to the association. We have really great neighbors. If you leave your garage door open, they call. Just the convenience of living there, and it is, I consider it a very safe place to live. In 10 minutes, you can do your banking, you can go to the post office, you can go to the store. We're so lucky to be so close to all the major highways, 1604, 410, I-35, the Wurzbach Parkway. A lot of opportunity for people to get involved. It's our neighborhood. It's not just, you know, their neighborhood. We have to work together to make it out. You know, there's a lot to talk about in terms of what's here now that these neighbors love, but we're going to take a trip back first. The post-war housing boom of the 50s really took off in the 1970s with the creation of subdivisions like Northern Hills and Valencia. Yet, who was out here before then? Jesse Degriado tells us about just who occupied these lands at that time. She also tells us about a historic road that runs right between these two neighborhoods. Lost amid the growth of homes and businesses in and around Northern Hills, its connection to the Alamo and the first peoples of San Antonio. How so, you may ask? The people that were living here in the 1740s were, would have been Mission Indians. Depicted here by artist Frank Weir, these may have been the Bayaya greeting arriving Spaniards. Ramon Vasquez with the American Indians of Texas at the Spanish colonial missions and historic preservationist Everett Fly 
Look at the old land grant maps showing what is now the Northern Hills area, part of the land believed to have been Rancho Monte Galvan, where cattle grazed for the Alamo and other missions, and the adjoining Rancho Monte Comal, which was the rancho for the Presidio soldiers. Yet Ramon Vasquez says tribes with the Coahuilteca nation had already been here thousands of years trading goods, and many were buried on the land they didn't want to leave. Mission holdouts stayed at Rancheria Grande. And those were remnants of different tribes. Every time I get to talk to Ramon, I learn something, and then it adds a piece, another piece to the, to the whole story. To the relief of their descendants, over the past decade, Everett Fly has discovered and helped restore three lost African-American cemeteries in the area where the enslaved once lived. One of those cemeteries is in the Northern Hills neighborhood. That's why it's so good for us to, yeah. to put these pieces together. There's even history running down the middle of Valencia and Northern Hills. The main thoroughfare that really does go to the city of Nacogdoches is one of the nation's oldest and most historic roads. Deemed El Camino Real de los Tejas by the Spaniards, it was a web of ancient migratory trails. My grandmother was telling the truth the whole time. Kathleen Sanchez says her grandmother had described traveling El Camino Real by wagon and on foot, perhaps similar to this, as migrant workers clearing trees for farmland. Now Sanchez and her husband live in Valencia, just off Nacogdoches, having raised a family in a historically significant area. I'm proud. I'm proud to know that this is how it worked out for us. Well, that's America for you. Certainly a story of humble beginnings and opportunities found. Now, I'm told that there was also a large German community out here at one time. I think that's reflective, I would think you'd agree, of the European immigrants who also helped yeah. make San Antonio the city it is today. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I just, I'm just i amazed that Nacogdoches Road actually goes to Nacogdoches. Right? Go yes. figure. I didn't know. And her grandma was telling the truth. <laughs> yes. Grandma was Thanks, telling grandma. the truth. Yeah. Thank you, Jesse. Always Jessie. believe your grandma. Always right. believe yes. your grandma. Right, yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Jesse. Uh -huh. We are just getting started with this edition of Know My Neighborhood, Northern Hills, Valencia. We are live at the 19th hole bar and grill kind of in the basement of the Northern Hills Country Club. We have so much more to cover here tonight, but first we want to take you outside to the guy who probably has the best view out there this evening. Adam Kasky is out on the course. Hey, Adam. Yeah, it's not only a good view, but I'm loving these little clouds overhead, you know, keeping the, giving us some natural shade, nice, comfortable temperatures, 60s and 70s. We're just putting around out here, having a good time, putt, putt. Every so often we sink one from like three inches, but hey, it's better than nothing, right? I've got Jack of MacArthur's team uh, practicing over there. We're going to put the pressure on him in a little bit. All right. Thank you, Adam. We have so much more to talk about here tonight, including introducing you to a woman who has a very big job on her shoulders, and she does it well. She is dubbed the Graffiti Lady of Valencia, but you won't find any cans of spray paint in her hands, just the opposite. Stick around to meet Diane and see what she does on her own to keep her neighborhood neat. Plus, one thing everyone touts about this neighborhood, these neighborhoods looking out for each other, especially when it comes to crime. Up next, we're gonna explore one of the biggest issues Northern Hill faces, car break-ins and burglaries, and the ongoing effort to keep this neighborhood safe. But first, some notes from the neighborhood. Everybody helps everybody out on this corner, that corner. It's just a very diverse neighborhood. It's very quiet. I mean, the neighbors all help each other. They need something and they will come and help me. No problem at all. If something goes wrong, you just make one phone call. And you got about six, six police officers right here. I walk the streets every day, so everybody knows me. They know my dogs. I, I get waved at all the time. Everyone keeps up well with, you know, their gardens and things like that. Yeah, like the fact that you can literally just drive out the neighborhood. You have two Walmarts, you have two HEBs, and they're all big. We talked about historic Nacogdoches Road. Now we're going to show you it live from Drone 12. Actually, I guess it's the neighborhood that we're going to see here. Northern Hills, Valencia, separated by Nacogdoches. That's a great shot. Look how green it is. I know, it looks so nice out there. 
Welcome back to this edition of Know My Neighborhood featuring Northern Hills and Valencia. You know, neighbors in Northern Hills really look out for each other. That includes looking for ways to prevent crime and letting neighbors know if something happens. Yeah, our Daniela Ibarra, Daniela Ibarra tells us that it's a neighborhood effort. And when it comes to keeping this community safe, it's all hands on deck. Walking around Northern Hills is peaceful. You can't even tell it's right by some of San Antonio's busiest roads, which is why Shirley Sturgeon loves living here. Very quiet, very nice because it's mostly retired people. The quiet has kept Calvin Ingram in his home for 40 years. And the neighborhood is a friendly neighborhood. Even then, Northern Hills is not immune from crime. The biggest one that San Antonio police says they hear of are property crimes like car break-ins. Ingram says someone rummaged through his cars parked in his driveway. We forgot to lock the vehicles. Nothing valuable was taken except Ingram's sense of security. Well, you feel violated. You, you feel violated. I mean, that's the only way I can put it, you know. But Safe officer Gregory Warrington says in the last month, San Antonio police investigated six car break-ins in Northern Hills. He says that number is low and encourages all victims to file reports. And it just helps us to, again, prosecute and get those individuals off the street. Even if it's something as minor as just shuffling through papers in your car. Yeah, uh, again, because somebody is going onto your private property, entering into your vehicle, that is a crime, right? So uh, make sure to report it. Twice a month, David Hadley patrols the neighborhood. You know, you just never know what you might stumble across next. He's a citizen on patrol. It's SAPD's Community Crime Watch program. That program could help that neighborhood with things like car burglaries because they know what to look for, right? Right. They can better identify potential issues. Um, they can educate their neighbors about, hey, this action that you're doing or the way that you're handling this might not be the best way to do it. Sometimes we'll be riding around and there'll be a window down. Well, that's not too good, so you just go knock on the door and tell them. It's a simple but meaningful gesture. The neighbors do look out for each other, which is helpful. They want some help out there, Daniela, and they are asking people to take the cop training. What does that entail? So it's literally just four hours at the SAPD substation where they hear different tips on, you know, what to look out for for their neighbors. And, you know, the thing that was interesting about this is this is something that neighbors really embrace. Like we were driving down the street and someone told us, there, hey, this guy's one of the uh, COPs. So people yeah. really embrace this. Yeah. yeah. And they know who's who. Yeah. Yeah. They That's know good. who are the citizens on patrol. Daniela, yes. thank you. Thanks. You, if you are just tuning in, we are live here at the Northern Hills Golf Club 19th hole. We got good snacks for after a round of 18 in here, but don't they say something about a day on the golf course is better than any day at the a, office? A bad day on the golf course is better than a good day at the office. Okay, well, we get to do both. But And, and there's one guy who enjoys himself <laughs> no matter where he is. That's Adam Kasky. He joins us now live somewhere out on the golf course here at Northern Hills. Adam. You know, we're on the practice green here, just putting around. We've got the driving range behind us, and it's bringing back memories of my days in high school when I worked at a golf course, worked in the grill area, then was driving the picker. A little tempted to get out there and ask if I could just do a quick round to fill up the baskets. Anyway, it's beautiful out here right now. We're still waiting on a few storms to the northwest, which could move into San Antonio later this evening. Right now, we are a beautiful, lovely 71 degrees on this very accurate homemade thermometer. All right, so MacArthur High School, the pressure is on. All of San Antonio is watching. Okay. Let's see you drain this putt. We are, on, we are on the practice, I'll let you add it here. We are on the practice green. This is for everything. And what I mean everything, break, bragging rights forever. Oh, forever. Yep, here we go. We got a little bit of windage. We're going uphill, it's a right to left. A right to left, the gallery's quiet for bragging rights. And he swings. Oh! Close, hey. Thanks for joining us. <laughs> Three hours a day he's out here practicing. Uh, he's got some high aspirations. Good to meet some young, energetic folks with good plans in life. I love it. All right, we're going to have more, and I've got a thermometer winner coming up later. Cinderella story 
out of nowhere. You know what? He still deserves a golf clap. I'm yeah, going to give him does. a golf clap. Yeah, he does. And coming up, if you live in the Valencia neighborhood, you might not know this woman's name, but you've probably seen her work graffiti. She's not putting it up. She's taking it down one wipe at a time. You're about to meet Diane, who's been fighting this neighborhood nuisance for the overall good. You want to stick around for this story. Well, she may not wear a cape or have otherworldly powers, but in the Valencia neighborhood, she is somewhat of a superhero. She has lived here for 46 years, gone from neighborhood veteran to vigilante now, and her arch enemy is graffiti. Yeah, Katrina Weber shows us how her goal is to wipe out graffiti. <laughs> With a tune in her heart and a pep in her step, Diane Johnson is actually on the hunt for trouble. Oh, we're on a mission here, huh? Yeah, we are. <laughs> she walks the streets of her Valencia neighborhood for more than her health. While she may not look like a superhero, she's definitely a grime fighter. Is that graffiti? It's graffiti. Oh, let's go. In a single bound, the 67-year-old is ready to right other people's wrongs. Cleaning up most graffiti that catches her eye. I sure didn't like the way it downgrades the image of the neighborhood and it just looked terrible. She first decided to do something about it around 20 years ago. With special supplies and a lot of elbow grease, she's been wiping out this type of crime ever since. Yay. All right. She very active, like I said, has very been a blessing for the community. Johnson often partners with San Antonio police and the city to take down the taggings. You're like a team. She's, she's Batman Absolutely. and Robin. Oh, you yes. Batman. She's like... <laughs> yeah, she's such a good partner. So good, in fact, people call her the graffiti lady. What do you think of that title, though, for you? <laughs> it's, they give me too much credit. No. <laughs> she may laugh, but this is no joke. Since 2022, SAPD has been called to catch more than 600 taggers. And a city team that tackles the bigger cleanup jobs has erased more than 21,000 scribblings in San Antonio in the last five months. How many times have you cleaned this box right here? Oh, probably two or three. Well, it may seem like a problem that never ends, Johnson is always happy to do her part to help. One wipe at a time, she is taking care of graffiti in the Valencia neighborhood, that is for sure. And Diane joins us now. Diane, you do, I know that we make jokes, but this is serious to you, isn't it? Very much so. It has been for a long time. I remember, must have been the early 2000s when the city put on Victoria um, Wilson Merritt's Graffiti in Tahiti, which was just animated books of just kind of fun. Well, you, you go way back with this work, and yeah. you are our superhero. We thought that it was only fitting that you <laughs> that should have a cape. We actually got you a cape. We got you a cape. It's all blinged out. With and you got to put a GL, GL Graffiti Lady. GL Graffiti Lady. Graffiti lady. <laughs> so we're going to put that on you now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, have to let you, I have to let you fasten that yourself. There. I but joked around you. with Diane when we first met. Do you remember I asked you what your size cape was? <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I didn't think you thought I was going to follow through with it. But and we did. We, the, the whole turn newsroom fell through with this one. So turn oh, around yeah, so they can see the back. Let us see the back. There she is, graffiti lady. GL. GL. Graffiti lady. I like it. All Keep right. up the good work. We all appreciate it. Keep fighting the good fight. <laughs> Diane, thank you so much. Yes, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Another round for the graffiti yeah. lady. You know, one of the really big draws of this neighborhood is right where we're standing, the Northern Hills Golf Course and Golf Club, but it's not the only thing that people love to celebrate in this neighborhood. They have an incredible senior center. You have got to see this. Hundreds of people there every day. We'll give you a tour. Yeah, and with such an involved group of seniors, there's also little to no involvement from younger families. It's an issue that both neighborhood associations are trying to tackle. We look at what could be the missing piece. More Know My Neighborhood after the break. Welcome back to Know My Neighborhood. You know, every neighborhood has its gems, things they love to celebrate. These neighborhoods have a couple, and it's not just about the golf. Yeah, though this is great. <laughs> love the Northern Hills Golf Course, and they also have a great senior center. 
There are two things that don't really need selling, but David Sears gives it a try. If you're looking to stay healthy and have some fun doing it, and you're 60 or older, do we have some places for you? There are natural workouts and workout machines. There is pool, ping pong, bingo, and a variety of classes like painting. So put this color right in this area. And it is all in one place, right in the heart of the Northern Hills and Valencia neighborhoods, the Northeast Senior Center. This is a real nice addition to the neighborhood. Hayden Norris is a staple in this place. He's here five days a week, works out his 88-year-old body three days a week, works out his mind the other days playing games like Rummicube. And if you're going to win, you really have to be sharp. This, this, and this, which gets me in, and then I'm out. Helen Garcia has been coming to this senior center to work out for a year and a half. I enjoy it. The Northeast Senior Center opened in November of 2015 and is a place of pride for the seniors in the neighborhood and surrounding area. A lot of them come and just visit, play bingo. You know, you look forward to it. Some of those folks are aspiring painters it's under the helpful instruction of teachers like 30-year veteran artist Andy Villarreal. This is one of the highlights that they look forward to every week because they get to do something for themselves. You know, I'm used to teaching college kids and they're younger and they're a little more rowdy. Not to say the seniors can't get a little rowdy, at least for them. You're watching one of the features of the center, a monthly women's pool tournament. Yes, there is a trophy. Oh, I've won several times, so it's not on here. Norma Omedo played when she was younger, life took over, but she's been back at it for a little over a year now. <laughs> I just got to get it a little bit closer. This senior center is not the only major attraction in this community. A lot of folks like to putt on over to the Northern Hills Golf Course. It has become a big part of the Valencia Northern Hills communities, especially for seniors. At one time, this was a private country club. A developer wanted to buy it from investors and build apartments, but the deal fell through. With the help of people from the neighborhood, the city purchased the course and club, and it's now part of the Alamo City Golf Trail. Mary Carricker lives on the course and was a member when it was private. When you have a house on a golf course, you know, you have some value there. You're always afraid of once that goes away, the value of your house goes away. That didn't happen. Matter of fact, since the city took over, it has become one of the most popular courses on the trail. We used to be able to just show up and go play. That's not that way anymore. But that doesn't keep Mary and her husband from playing as many as three times a week. Great course, great convenience. It's a well-kept secret. Northern Hills is. We just feel very fortunate to have the golf course here. Before you say it, Steve, before you say it. What? I when just I was, was at the senior center, yes, I felt right at home. I was <laughs> hanging with my peeps, man. It was great. Those people were fantastic over there. And a couple of things about the senior center, they feed 300 people a day. Wow. Meals on Wheels helps them out with that. So that's another reason why it's such a popular place. And health screenings and health resources. Well, so. there's, and this is not just your normal golf course. I mean, no, no, no. this is a community that, this is a neighborhood that fought for this golf course to keep it. If you don't shank your drive, you can, might hit the senior center. This thing is down the street. Yeah, that's why they're it's right so close to each other. Yeah. So it's really close. And yeah, the, the the citizens here fought for this golf course. Yeah. And the amazing thing about this is it was a private golf club, which means that they have some extra space here that none of yep. the other golf golf courses on the Animal Trail have. So they can have receptions, they can have parties, they can have all kinds of stuff. They here. can have it's a Know My Neighborhood broadcast yeah, from exactly. here. Yeah, yeah, we can show up. And so it, no, this is a great place. And they say it's one of the popular ones on the tour. So very I cool. Bet. Yeah, nice. a lot to love about it. Thank so, you, David. Thank you, David. I know it was uh, torture for you to have to get out on a golf course, but I appreciate you Brutal, gritting your teeth and making it happen. Yeah, so. the sacrifice, yeah. truly. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks. Anything for y'all. Yeah. <laughs> All right, coming up next here on this Know My Neighborhood episode, the Voluntary Homeowners Association is yet another thing that draws people to neighborhoods like Valencia and Northern Hills. The fees are not mandatory. But does that come at a bigger price? When we come back, we look at the divide when it comes to getting involved and the resolution that might be hard to come by. But right now, more notes. The most thing that I love about my, about my neighborhood is my friends, my parents, and my neighborhood friends. And I live in this area for 
almost 30 years. Uh, my kids were little at that time. The schools are good. It's a good neighborhood to raise children. And what I love about the neighborhood is playing like water balloon fights. The fact that there's some kids that are finally moving in are pretty cool because now my stepson and my son, they get to play basketball. And I miss like, hey, can I have some water? I'm like, all right, go for it. Everybody wants to be my friend and like play outside with me. It's kind of a catch-22 out of the hundreds of families who live in the Valencia neighborhood. Very few actually participate in the Voluntary Neighborhood Association. For a lot of the newer families we talked to, they told us that a lack of amenities made it hard for them to justify paying the fees. But our Avery Everett explains how these neighborhood associations are trying to find some new ways to meet these new families. We're trying to just bring the community together. Even in a neighborhood with hundreds of families, the clubhouse that belongs to the Valencia Homeowners Association usually sits empty. Well, we try and do different activities to uh, promote community. So this place has a lot of potential. We just want it active more often. Valencia's association is voluntary. And we're trying to get the word out. But in a neighborhood with more than 700 homes. Right now we have 75. Wow, 75 members. Yeah, so we've got a lot of work to do. And they're not alone. Northern Hills has a lot of older people, but we're getting younger families in. A lot of our board members are older and they're ready to retire and they want to see, you know, that the neighborhood continues on. Across both these neighborhoods, we're told by some community members that it can be hard to find something to do for your family. In this part of town, one neighborhood pool sits empty and others have been filled up. Without these amenities, neighborhood leaders say it's difficult to get newer residents and younger families invested in these community neighborhood associations. We're just trying to um, uh, to bring together and make a, a closer community. Neighbors can join Valencia's HOA for $75 a year, and Northern Hills is about 50. It was offered, and we can get the newsletter, but we really don't keep up with it as much. When Christian Gonzalez moved to Northern Hills, cost wasn't his issue. They didn't necessarily seem to offer a great deal. He says this playground at Northern Hills Elementary School is really the only one in the neighborhood. Limited parks and locked away pools are the main reasons newer neighbors say they just can't justify HOA fees. I think if a swimming pool like was open, I think that would be a huge, you know, draw to younger families. But longtime neighbors say adding amenities is easier said than done. We have the uh, membership application. Bill Stout packs folders for new families. And what, you take your packets every time and you go and try to meet them? Yeah. Valencia's next step is block walking with the goal of building community buy-in. What do you want the future of this neighborhood to be? I want to see families out getting together. I'd love to see um, out here having barbecues and playing. So Bill and his welcome packets is only one solution for Valencia. They're also going to start block walking to meet more neighbors, and they're also planning to hold more community events at the clubhouse. They had Santa back in December. They've done wine tastings, and they're hoping to do barbecues in the summer. So any ways that they can attract different people. Yeah, it is a grassroots, like boots on the ground, neighbor to neighbor effort. And they're excited. They're ready to get everyone involved and bring back the community. It's yeah. a great neighborhood. Yeah. Yeah, why wouldn't they be excited? Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Avery. Yeah, Thanks. thank you so much. Let's go outside now. A look outside above the Valencia neighborhood. We have drone 12 flying high above this neighborhood this evening. Take a look at how green it looks out there. My gosh, it's a beautiful day no matter where you live. Can't really complain about these temperatures. Yeah, and back here at the Northern Hills Golf Course, we've been talking all hour about what neighbors love about these communities and what they'd like to see changed. Our Adam Kasky is on the golf course this evening, a place that's, of course, nice and green out there now, but could use a little more rain, Adam. Oh, yeah, especially as we get into the summertime, we need the rain. Now, <laughs> I've been kind of addicted to just putting around. I'm not a golfer. Not a golfer. I'll admit that, okay? I don't have the patience for it. It's just I've tried it a few times, and I've been told it's probably not my thing. And I have enough hobbies, but this has been addicting. I sunk a 40-plus footer, and I have a witness to prove it. So we're going bigger. What are we, probably like 60 feet? <laughs> Sean's shaking his head no. All right, here we go. Go, break, break, baby. Ah! 
It was the wind, definitely the wind. Totally the wind picked up, wind picked up. Oh yeah! <laughs> you know what that sound means. What day is it? It's Thursday. What day is it? Thermometer. Thermometer day! Oh my goodness! Thursday thermometer day, <laughs> yeah! Next time we're gonna practice this a little few more times before we come on. <laughs> anyway, Anna here. I mentioned at five, I said, hey, we're here, first come, first serve for one of the uh, community members to come by. So I grant you thy thermometer. This is yours. Ooh, all right. Yes. Now, and this is my neighborhood. All that's right. right. And my favorite station, KSAT 12. And we are Fiesta buddies, too. I see you around Fiesta. Oh, yeah. We get all crazy together at Fiesta, yes. and it's almost that time of year. Yes. All right. Three, two, one, Viva Fiesta, and we'll toss it back. Because it's soon, it's coming up. Three, right. two, one. Viva, Viva Fiesta! Fiesta! It's right around the corner. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, my favorite part of that might have been Caskey dancing and, and uh, her Me wanting no kneeling. part of it. <laughs> it's never too early for a Viva Fiesta. It's never too early for a Viva Fiesta, exactly. All right, thank you, Adam. We have so much more Know My Neighborhood coming up after this. Well, welcome back to Know My Neighborhood. There is so much about this neighborhood, Valencia and Northern Hills, that we have learned tonight. But what we love about doing these shows is that no matter where we go, there are so many things that are common across neighborhoods. Yeah, and, and I love the fact that this is a great city made up of great neighborhoods and great people. And that's what we find out every week. And we want to know about your neighborhood. But we'd like an invite first. We just don't want to show up at your door and knock and everybody come. We so, will do that. But yeah, we can do it, first. but we don't want to do it. So we have a QR code right now with with confetti. Yeah, we have a QR code right now that will take you to the place where you can actually invite us to come out to your neighborhood, tell us where to visit and why we should go there. We also have this information on our website. If you want to go check that out, let us know where we should head next. All right, Ray, I want you to come up here too, Ray. Janet because and Ray here. Janet and Ray, Ray opened up his house to us earlier, and Janet was there, and we sat out on the golf course on probably the windiest day San Antonio has ever seen. <laughs> so, so, Adam, I'm going to let you take this part. Well, Janet was so kind, just coming up to me saying, hey, you know that other thermometer? Would you mind if we could maybe use it as an auction item? I said, that's why I brought it, so y'all could have it. For Northern this, Hills. For yeah. Northern Hills, for your HOA, and to get more people involved and get them going. So, yes. You're so welcome. You're so welcome. And this is a, this is a beautiful ornament design, too. So that's Christmas ornament. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Well, thanks to everybody here who came out to be thanks, a part Ray. of this. Thank but you. also, we always have to thank neighbors for letting us tell their stories. Because that's what this is all about. It is their stories that we're fortunate enough to get to share with you. Absolutely. It's your, it's your stories on our air, and it's your voice. And that's what we're all about with Know My Neighborhood. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back. This is our sixth Know My Neighborhood. We have been all around San Antonio, every side of the city, and we're going to keep doing that. We showed you that QR code, an invite for you to let us know where you want us to head to next. We're going to tell you where we're going next month. We are headed downtown during April, the month of Fiesta. Yeah. Little, uh, you know, didn't one of the guys in this episode say he didn't, would never want to live downtown? What is it like well, to live downtown? And that's what we're going to find yeah. out. What are some of the major issues? How do they feel about Fiesta basically right outside their front door? Those stories and more come your way next month in the latest episode of Know My Neighborhood. But we learned a lot about Northern Hills and Valencia. And that's what I love about these episodes more than anything else is getting to meet great people and hear their issues and their stories. Yeah, for sure. And you get to be a part of that, which we love as well, because you bring thermometers. <laughs> I get to do the fun side of it. Thank you. Because, <laughs> you know, there's always, well, how do you put it? The good, the bad, and the frustrating? Yeah. That's right. Yeah. And then the fun. And that's what I try to focus on. We leave you with a live shot over Northern Hills, Valencia. See you on the night beat. Good night. Yay!